everyone, it's Jo Harris and today we're looking at a creative use of PowerPoint presentations as a teaching and learning tool and specifically within that it's all about digital presentations. So why use PowerPoint? Well you've really got to ask yourself three key questions when you're thinking about creating a presentation, a digital presentation. For what purpose am I creating this? For what audience and for what message? So before we dive into that, I just want to give a brief technical overview uh, so that you can create and be very creative in your expression of your information and the way that you do that really is limitless. So we're going to look at modality, uh, the digital form of it and what providers are available for us as educators. Well. The modality of it is really multimodal because it engages both our, both our visual modality and our auditory because you can add narration, audio files and, vis and video to your presentation. And it's digital because it's constructed on the computer. It is not possible to have these presentations without technology. And because it's digital, you can embed it in different uh, places. Um, you know, you can embed it in your blog, you can embed it in your wiki space, any digital um, on Google Drive. Um, but really, to be able to share your digital presentation, you must first host it somewhere. You must first place it somewhere so that you get a digital address. Uh, which is the HTTPS um, name of your presentation and so that you can then um, share it. So you can post your digital presentations on Google Drive, YouTube, Wikispaces and then in your blog. And there's many layers and I love presentations, digital presentations because you can layer it to make it a richer learning experience which is then obviously going to be more engaging for your learners, students. And the layers that you can add are audio files, uh, podcasts, video, YouTube clips embedded in your digital um, PowerPoint presentation. You can embed medias, you can put in a quiz, you can use it then as a handout, you can put your notes in it as a presenter. And there's many providers available uh, for digital presentations. I personally love iMindMap, Prezi, uh, because they're unexpected where they go and it's um, just it's moving so it's got that kinesthetic part to it as well which is more engaging for the learner and gets their attention. There's obviously PowerPoint uh, presentation with Microsoft and you can use slide different slide transitions as I'm doing today to kind of wake up the brain. Uh, Google Drive presentations, SkyDrive, Glogster and Smilebox are some others. So here are my tips for having bad slide construction. <laughs> Death by PowerPoint. I think we've all been in a room in a presentation where it's just this monologue going on and, and the audience are just thinking, I don't know why I'm sitting in this room listening to this presentation. I could just read it at home. Um, the presenter is not adding anything. They're just reading their presentation. So they're really just taking something that could be on a type document and putting it in PowerPoint, which is the very base level of the salmon model. And you really need to make it engaging for your audience by having a very balanced text versus visual component and really watch your tonality as a presenter. So these are my tips for good slide construction and to make them engaging uh, you really must make sure that it's your presentation is very specific for that audience and you choose the correct presentation type. Uh, a PowerPoint presentation will be very different if it's a lecture versus a discussion prompt versus a resource. Um, so you really need to be thinking about those things and really about access, where can I host this presentation so that people can access it and here's a number of sources that you can host your slide presentation on Google Drive, Wikispace, Flickr, SlideShare, SlideRocket, SlideServe, MyPlick, Slide6, Auto, AuthorStream, SlideBoom, PowerShow and Zoho Show. Um, my suggestion is just to pick a one or two and um, just use that consistently. I'm personally using Google Drive as well as uh, SlideShare. Uh, the other tips for slide construction is you really need to take them on a journey and from beginning to end um, it needs to be clean and easy to look at. Um, you must test it. Uh, you should save it as a PDF or into the cloud if you're going to access the presentation on a different device. I made this mistake as a trainer. I created a PowerPoint presentation on my laptop and then I had to um, present it, I had to give the business, the business and the organisation it on a 
uh, memory stick and a lot of my slides didn't come across so whereas if you can act save it to a cloud or save it as a PDF then you're not going to have those problems like I did that day it was <laughs> baptism by fire you could say and there's an excellent book called Slideology by Nancy Duart and published by O'Reilly Media in 2008 if you're really into this I would have uh, personally it's an expensive book it's about 68 bucks um, but if you know that and you know why should you bother to try and take your digital presentation to the next level? Why bother to try and wow your audience? Well, if it's unexpected, multimodal, and you use multimedia, you're more going to get the learner into a learning state and get past that RAS filter and to make them become a long-term learning. So it's about getting those information through true to their uh, filters in their how they learn and so that they then becomes a lifelong learning. So who are the users of PowerPoint presentation and digital presentations in the education part pathway? Uh, it's really the teacher, the student and as a teacher we can then choose if we want it to do it live or we want to record it. So the teacher uses it as a set task. You can have a, your students create a PowerPoint presentation and or they can use it to communicate, uh, give a presentation themselves to the class. Uh, it can be used to um, uh, capture their observations say on a field tier trip and it can also be a reflection and creation tool. I've actually created a PowerPoint presentation, um, how to search for PowerPoint presentation on through Google search, sorry, and the link to this is Hi also everyone, in um, this blog as well, um, but as you can see I'm showing you here Google. how I can um, actually embed is be your new this YouTube best. clip into a slide on PowerPoint. So what are the types of tasks that you can use PowerPoint presentation? Well, it's great for reporting, reflection and learning. It's fabulous for interactive displays, creating tours uh, like in a museum tour of artifacts that you've collected on a field trip and also creating a display. And it's also awesome as a publisher. You can make postcards, handouts and PDF images from, make, from a slide and I've created a sample of this, an example of this below as well on this blog. The teacher uses it as, in the, as the educator by considering who my audience, what is the message, what multimedia can I use to um, engage and make this a wow presentation, and, but you really need to have a very clear learning intent uh, for, for that. The student user, for example, can use PowerPoint and digital presentations as a fun, creative expression to actuate and make something from their knowledge to teach other people and it can also be an individual versus group work task. They can be used uh, for making projects, for presentation or a lecture that they teach the class, for making movies by using slow stills, narration and, and animation. They can make it into a PDF slideshow or movie. They can make it into a publication like, such as a postcard as a, and save it as a PDF file to be printed. They can use it to create a book, a comic, a vision board or charts, for example, like a family tree. So looking uh, within the SAMA model, um, some examples that um, of tasks that you can use is that students at the substitution level will just simply type their project into PowerPoint. At augmentation, they would insert charts, audio files, videos from YouTube, and then or they could actually create a PDF postcard from what they've typed into the PowerPoint slide. At the modification level, they could create a video with narration to PowerPoint slide presentation, and at the redefinition level, they could take a photo of material that they've archived from a field trip to create a mini museum of a reserve which they visited and which can then be placed on Wikispace for collaboration and input and sharing with other experts, say from the Department of Primary Industry or a museum or local interest groups that take care of that reserve. So let's evaluate this tool based on the SWOT model. Let's look at its strengths, weaknesses and opportunities and threats. Well the strengths that I see are that this tool gives us flexibility, have great creative expression, um, it's very easily available. Most people have access to a presentation tool like Prezi which is free or uh, Microsoft or MindMap. They can be downloaded onto your home computer or onto your iPad. 
it's got once you've got that digital presentation it's got excellent hosting capacity which means that you can um, share it in various websites fantastic ability to layer different modalities into it and different levels of multimedia so it's absolutely fantastic and obviously once you've created it you can use it again and again and again and keep adding to it as you learn and refine after you've used it as a presentation. The weaknesses are that it's easy to be boring um, with that whole monologue death by PowerPoint too much text and it's easy for you to present for you um, but it actually would be boring for the audience if it's just a lot of text and it's easy to stick with what you know and safe and comfortable as a as a teacher because it just takes that extra bit of time to do transitions embed multimedia into it so the weakness is is to be lazy I guess in your use of this tool the opportunity is that there is great to try new programs like Prezi and iMap iMindMap um, hosting capabilities Capability, so you can get it into various websites that you could then save it and so it's a, come up on Google search for other educators to use and that you can refocus and what it's time for us as educators to refocus and widen the lens of the functionality of digital presentations because there's lots of different ways that we can do it to make it a richer ex learning experience using this tool. The threat is plagiarism and checking that you use a credible author of if you're going to use someone else's PowerPoint presentation that you find online. So this video has been um, present, created by me and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts thoughts, observations and questions in the comments section below. See you next time. Bye.